Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman, and today what I'm going to walk you through is how to calculate the relationship between a circle that's inscribed in an equilateral triangle. It's a somewhat arcane issue, but it is one that comes up occasionally on the GMAT, and if you're not studying for the GMAT, you might find this useful too in a geometry class or on other tests. And the key thing to understand is that they are related in a predictable way. So I've drawn it up here. We have a circle inscribed in an equilateral triangle. I wrote in 60 degrees in two of these interior angles in the equilateral triangle. And the trick is figuring out what does this circle have in common? We know that it, it has some points of tangency, but if we know, for instance, the area of the triangle or the perimeter of the triangle or the length of one of the sides of the triangle, how would we translate that into information about the circle? So that's when I, what I'm going to show you now. This point right here, it's this, the center of the circle, if you can trust my not so perfect drawing of a circle up here. It's the center of the circle and since an equilateral triangle has the same dimensions in every direction, it's also the center of the equilateral triangle. So what happens if we draw this line out here is it's not related to the circle exactly, but we're bisecting this angle. So this is a 60 degree angle, this whole angle right here. So half of it right here is 30 degrees. Now that's a step in the right direction. 30 degrees comes up in some handy rules. And then if we draw a line down from the center of the circle, perpendicular with the base of the triangle, we have a 90 degree angle. And that leaves us with a 60 degree angle right here. And now maybe you can see where I'm going with this. This line right here is the radius of the circle. And this side right here, opposite the 60 degree angle in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, is half of the length of one side of the triangle. So if we know the radius, we can take one step to get to half of the side of the triangle. Now how we do that might not be obvious to some of you. One trick that's useful on the GMAT and also in, in geometry and various other contexts is the 30, 60, 90 triangle and the standard side lengths for that sort of triangle. So let's draw that separately here, just to make it a little clearer. Here's our 30, here's our 60, and our 90. So let's call the short side x, the short side being the one opposite the 30 degree angle. If that's x, the medium length side opposite the 60 degree angle is x root 2, and then the hypotenuse, the long side, is 2x. That's true for any 30, 60, 90 triangle. And since we've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here, we can apply it. We have the radius, that's the short side, which means half of the base of the triangle is radius times root two. That means that a side of the triangle is one of these plus another one of these, two times r times root two. That's one side of the triangle. So knowing the radius, you can find the side of the triangle. From the side, you can find the perimeter of the triangle. From the side, you can find the area of the triangle. And that's all you could really need to find out about an equilateral triangle. So really, it's just these one dimension from the circle and one dimension from the triangle. The trick is building that triangle and identifying how the radius of the circle relates to the measurements of the equilateral triangle. Now, let's try one more thing. What I just showed you was a circle inscribed in an equilateral triangle. But what happens if we reverse the roles? What happens if we've got a big circle and we inscribe an equilateral triangle in the circle? Now, if you do it perfectly, it doesn't quite look like that, but you'll have to bear with me. So, circle, equilateral triangle. Again, the center of the circle is also the center of the triangle. So once again, let's draw a radius. Hopefully this is starting to look familiar if you were watching just two or three minutes ago. So this is the radius. It's from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle. And this bisects this 60 degree angle in the equilateral triangle. So we have a 30 degree angle right here. If we drop a line from the center of the circle and the center of the triangle down to the base of the triangle, we have a right angle, which means this is a 60 degree angle. So one more time, we're back in the same place. 
we've got this 30, 60, 90 triangle inside the equilateral triangle where one of the sides is the radius of the circle. So if we were to use the rule I showed you before I erased the board, we have the short side of x, the medium length side of x root 2, and the long side of 2x. So again, we can relate the radius of the circle, r or 2x, to the side length of the triangle. In this case, the relationship has been changed a little bit, but still, the radius is in terms of x, the length of the base of the triangle is in terms of x. It would take a little algebra to actually work out the precise relationships between the radius of the circle and the perimeter of the triangle, or the area of the circle and the area of the triangle, but from there it's all pretty basic geometry. The tricky part is what I've just shown you, figuring out how the radius relates to any length of the triangle. So this applies whether you're de dealing with an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle, or vice versa, a circle inscribed in an equilateral triangle. The key points to remember to take away from this video are first, that the center point of the circle is the same as the center point of the equilateral triangle. Once you know that, all you have to do is draw a radius. When you draw a radius, whether it's inside the circle or outside the circle, draw the radius and come up with this 30, 60, 90 triangle you have a relationship between one side of the triangle and the radius of the circle. Given those two things, everything else follows. Now that we've covered that, for more GMAT math tips, including some things specifically on geometry and a written version of this concept, check out my website, gmathacks.com, check out my GMAT math textbook, Total GMAT Math, and I look forward to seeing you next time.